Hi everyone, my name is Sadaf Alohiri and welcome to this demo that I will cover how to convert your existing vSphere, vSphere with vSAN or your VMware vSphere foundation into VMware Cloud Foundation. This way you would benefit from the centralized management and built-in lifecycle management through SCDC Manager. You heard correctly, as vCF 5.2, you have the possibility to convert your brownfield environment into vCF. But before going through the requirements and details, if you are new to vlmns.net channel, please don't forget to subscribe to get notified for upcoming videos. So if you are ready, let's get started. VMware has always tried to help the customers to shift their focus to be more innovative rather than spending their time to maintain lifecycle and manage the infrastructure and just keep the lights on. And with VCF 5.2, VMware announced the possibility of converting your existing brownfield environment into VCF with minimal effort. If you are already familiar with VCF, you know we have a hard requirement of having 4 ESXi hosts with vSAN as a principal storage for management domain. But now for the first time, VMware gives you the possibility to convert your existing brownfield environment that utilizes the external storage and convert it into management domain, which is quite amazing for customers that for different reasons wants to keep using their external storage. There are some requirements that you need to make sure you have it in place before starting this process and some common types of deployments that can't yet be imported in VCF 5.2. I highly recommend reading them carefully. I will put the link in the description of the video so then you can read it at your own pace. But let's jump into the demo and explore how you should convert your brownfield environment into VCF. One of the main requirements for conversion is that your brownfield environment needs to be aligned with VCF 5.2 bill of material build number which means your vCenter server and ESXi host need to be minimum at version 8 update 3. As you can see, my vCenter server and my ESXi host are on version 8 update 3. The other requirement is regarding DRS that needs to be configured in fully automated mode and the status of the cluster needs to be healthy. Besides, only the distributed switch is supported and your ESXi host uplinks need to be connected to your VDS, which here you can see all my ESXi host uplinks are connected to my VDS. And one last thing, before you start converting, you need to download STDC Manager together with VCF Import Tool Script and optionally you can also download NSX Installation Bundle to install NSX at the same time you are running the Convert Script or skip it for the later stage. For this demo, I will skip the NSX Installation and focus on the conversion first. The other important point is vCenter and STDC Manager must be co-located with the cluster being converted. After downloading the required sources, you need to deploy the SCDC Manager OVA template. For this demo, I have skipped the deployment of SCDC Manager because I believe it's an easy task and you are already familiar with. So after you are done with SCDC Manager deployment, you can connect to SCDC Manager through web and you can see the status is now initializing. This is the expected state because nothing has been configured yet. So now, what I need to do is to connect to the SCDC Manager through VNSCP to copy the VCF import tool script. After that, I connect to SCDC Manager with SSH and change the directory to where I have copied the VCF import tool to extract it. After the extraction task gets completed, you need to go to the VCF Brownfield toolset directory because the Python script that you should run is located there. First, you need to run a check command to make sure you meet all the prereqs. I will put the command syntax in the description of the video to easily copy-paste for your environment. Here in the command you need to provide the FQDN of your vCenter server, the management domain that you want to create and choose if you want to install NSX or skip it for the later stage. After running the command, it will ask for vCenter server SSO and SCDC manager local admin password. Then, it will ask if I accept the thumbprint of vCenter server. So with yes, I accept the thumbprint and just after a couple of minutes the checks get completed and I can see that all the checks are successfully passed. If for any reason your checks wouldn't get successfully passed, you can download the report, check what was the issue, fix it and run the command again. So now I run the same command but I just change the check key with convert. It will ask for vCenter SSO, SCDC Manager Local Admin, vCenter SSH root and finally SCDC Manager Backup User Password. 
Then it will of course ask if I accept the vCenter server SSH key. I say yes and then the process to convert my vCenter server to SCDC manager management domain will start. It will also ask if I accept the ES6I host SSH keys. In the process I can see the phase 2 of SCDC manager health check got completed with zero warnings. The whole conversion process is not long and disruptive. So I will go back to my vCenter server to check everything is up and running and it works as it should. Then I also check my SCDC manager to see what is happening in the background. I can see the domain import has been initialized. And then I go back to my party session. And then soon after I get the message that VCF import has been successfully completed. I go back to the SCDC manager and I can check the SCDC manager version. As you can see it's VCF 5.2. I can also check my ESXi host in the SCDC manager. I will go back to my vCenter server and as you can see it has automatically created a resource pool where my vCenter server and SCDC manager has been added underneath. By this we reach to the end of this video and I hope that it was informative for you. And stay tuned for the next video where I will explain how to import the VI workload domain into an existing VCF environment. Thanks for watching.